Welcome, everybody, to another episode of 10K Hours. Tonight, we got Steven Silver with us. Thank you. Steven, how you doing tonight? Good, man. Really yeah? well, thank you. Yeah, so what's going on with you? You know, during this whole COVID thing, just really hanging out at the house, not moving yeah, too Not far. doing too yeah, much, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, it's just when you asked me, hey, to come do this, I'm like, oh, man, drive an hour away. But it's like, hey, I really should get out of the house. <laughs> get out of the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, man. I mean, so, you know, what we, you know, what this show is about is about the journey, right? Yeah. So, you know, we want to really dig deep. We want to learn about you as a person, as an artist, where you come from, what you've gone through to get to where you are right now and what you're up to. Yeah, right. So, yeah, I mean, you know, what was when you were when you were getting into art, you know, about how old were you? Really, I think six is like the earliest that I remember. Mm -hmm. getting into art but there, there was something just very specific that happened to me that was really wild and I love telling this story because I feel like everything somehow um, presents itself you don't know why something happens and sometimes you don't you don't act on things and, right. and this this thing that happened to me when I was six years old made me realize because I acted on it something became of it and that incident was I was born and raised in uh, England, in London. I was living in England at the time. Mm -hmm. I'm in my bedroom. I'm looking out my bedroom window and it's raining and I just see something in my backyard. And I go downstairs and I go into the backyard. I, I got the whole house full, you know, there's seven people in my family. Seven people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got <laughs> my brothers, my sister, my parents. There was, and here I am, I'm the one who sees it. I'm the one that goes outside and finds it. What do I find? I find a sketchbook laying in my backyard, an original sketchbook. And inside that sketchbook was portraits. It was landscapes. You just it found was, it? Yeah. It was just oh, sitting wow. originals, like sitting in. And I wish I still had it. But when I moved to America, when I was 10 years old, you know, it, you I'm a young it, yeah. kid. I'm not going to mm -hmm. hold on to it. But that thing I carried around with me everywhere I went and was always drawing. No one else in my family drew. And that for me was just like this first incident that happened and I realized I just, I kept this thing going. I kept that, it was, I can't say it was a dream or anything like that at the point. I didn't know what it was other than this is kind of like cool and I want to draw and I found myself just sketching all the time and that mm -hmm. became like this obsession. Oh, that that's, cool. Yeah. that's cool. That's yeah. cool. So, so at a very, very young age, you wanted to start drawing and everything like that. Yeah. So. For the people that don't know, you know, your your extensive list of things that you've worked on, like what, what are some of the IPs and projects that you've, you've worked on over the years? Yeah, so I think the ones that people probably know me the most for right, was right. Kim Possible, um, mm -hmm. Clerks, the animated series. That was the first Personal one. Personal favorite of that mine, I did. actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. we've had many conversations. <laughs> it's just, it, was, it was a really fun, interesting time. And I got to tell you a story about how that even happened. But um, from Clerks, Kim Possible, Danny Phantom, mm -hmm. from Nickelodeon. And uh, th those are like the big key ones that people are more familiar right, with. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and as a character designer, so I was hired in 1997 into animation as a character designer on a show called Hysteria, mm -hmm. which I don't know if you ever remember. Or it's not pulling any, any strings, I'll be honest with you right yeah. now, but I, I'm going to have to check that out later. Yeah. It was it was a historical one, but while I was there, my buddy said, hey, and that's the, the whole, this whole industry is about connection, right? It's about Absolutely people it that you Absolutely. know. Have you met this person? Uh, do, you know, can you recommend someone? Have you worked with them before? And when I was at Warner Brothers, this guy, that friend of mine said, hey, I heard Kevin Smith's looking for a character, you know, they're doing Clerks, the animated series. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, love the, um, his movies. And then he said, I know someone, you should submit your portfolio. You submit your portfolio. And then that's how I got my like foot into the Disney door, where now I get to work on Clerks, the animated series mm -hmm. and um but at that time when i was actually there and i got hired my dream was to kind of work at feature animation disney feature animation wow how cool would that be and then when i just got hired basically onto uh clerks the animated series i got a call from disney feature animation to work on a show and then i'm like oh my god do i go to disney feature animation or do I just 
uh, stay working on clerks? Am I, am I gonna, what do I want to do? I got my dream job that I can go and do. Otherwise I got to stay, I'm going to stay on this clerk show. And I just made the decision. You know what? I made a commitment to the director and everyone else. I'm going to do the right thing. And lucky, luckily for me, that feature show got canceled like uh, about two months later. So I would have oh, been laid off anyway. Wow. You know? So that was like a, a good you thing that I gut. listened Karma. to my gut yeah, yeah. there and stayed there. That's great. Oh man. Yeah. Wow. You yeah. made the right choice for sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a huge, huge fan of Kevin. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely one of the inspirations uh, to do a podcast came from Kevin doing podcasts for sure. And such a, a great guy. You Absolutely. Know? It's just like, yeah. He's so just personable and just, so easy to get along with and just has has a vision, knows what he wants. And it was just great when all those guys would come to the studio and uh, Scott Mosier, he was an artist and he would always, I, he was always behind me, you know, just sometimes I didn't <laughs> even know he was there neck. sometimes. Yeah, it was, I'd be sitting there and I'd be drawing and all of a sudden I turn around and there's, <laughs> going, oh dude, but then we got to, you know, really get to know each other really well. And I invited him to the, hey, come to the, Disney drawing, uh, life drawing class, and he'd show up there, and he just loved. Um, again, he, he he loved art, and that's what made it even more that's special. Awesome. You, know, you know, he went into anime. He went into animation. Oh no, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember. I think he, I think he was part of the team that did the Grinch animated one that recently oh, really? came out. Okay. Yeah, like he's been doing oh, a right lot of on. CG animated. From yeah. what from what I remember from listening to. Um, uh, the Smodcast from Kevin Smith right, and, okay. and him. He um, loved it, you know. Gets yeah. following the passion, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's 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 crazy. So you've worked on a lot of things. Um, you know, w let's 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 take it back a little bit. Like when you were in school, you know, let's say in 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 high school or in college. Did you go to college? No, you no, didn't go to college. No. You went. Right through high school and started your career. Yeah. Well, uh, I went from high school to I would say just like a semester and a half of junior college. And okay. at that point, I'm just like, yeah, I'm out of here. And then I just started, <laughs> then just started doing caricatures at theme parks in San Diego at SeaWorld in San Diego. Oh wow! So I started. I went. I left college. Dropped out. Told my parents, mom, dad, I can't do this. And they knew that I hated school academically. I sucked. Everything was horrible. And I, they said, well, listen, if you think that you can make it as an uh, artist, you got to move out. We're going to support you in the way of only we're just going to pay for your health insurance because we know that you won't, you know, and, <laughs> and so true. <laughs> right. That's and then so true. you're on our car insurance, but everything else, if you feel you can do it, then you got to go do it. And it was the best thing they ever did was at that point when That's I was awesome. 18, sort of like launching me to go, yeah, this is what I want to do. So like when you first started out, like what were some of the things that you you felt like, or not that you felt, but you had to overcome? Yeah. Like what were the, what, what were the hard lessons learned on that journey? I, I think just being a live caricature artist really just puts you on the spot. A lot of artists are, you know, they get nervous or they're just intimidated or they're self-conscious about their artwork, mm -hmm. the things they create. There's a lot of the imposter syndrome going on, right? There's a lot of, wow, am I good I enough? I feel like you're directly speaking my soul right now. <laughs> I see yeah. it. I see yeah, it in your eyes. But this is the thing. It's like yeah. everyone, so many people are going through this and, and I was going through it too. But now you're thrown into an environment where you got people who some of them, you, they're not even speaking, you're not even speaking the same language. Tourists, different people are coming and now they're sitting in front of you and you're trying to communicate with them and then you've got a crowd of people behind you and then you've got people who are whispering behind you and going, that looks nothing like that guy, that sucks. <laughs> you know, and you got all this Always pressure. critics, <laughs> yeah. always critics, you everywhere you critics. go. You got the you got the people who are ripping up the drawing in front of your face who are, don't like oh what you gosh, did. Oh my gosh, that actually who, happened? Oh, yeah, they, they don't want to pay and I mean, I had so, there's so many stories of just rejection oh, wow. being a live caricature artist yeah. not to mention the outdoor environment you're drawing in the heat you're drawing people are sneezing and they sneeze right on you you know this oh. way i'm all for everyone wearing wearing masks always <laughs> from now on, you know just always wear it that way no, no one gets sick anymore right? right right but um you're dealing with all those elements and i think that was a real um it, it really built something up in me that could have you could have said this was the worst horrible thing like a lot of people is putting people in front of people like a lot of people their biggest right. fear is public speaking and doing all that now i'm just talking to strangers all day long trying yeah. to have conversation with them and dealing with all that pressure 
And at first it took me a while to get, so that was like the hardest thing I had to overcome. It's hard, it's hard. I remember my first speaking engagement, it was kind of nuts. Right, you get real nervous. You just like don't know like, what do I need to do? I do realize that the most effective thing that you can ever do in any of these situations, especially when it came to the teaching in front of people is just be yourself, you know, just tell people your experiences. I'm not gonna try to make up something, a story that I haven't, experienced and I thought when you just when I was starting just to let that out even in conversation it just makes it that much more easy to do it but that that was a tough thing but it also helped me with rejection in the animation industry getting rejected over and over with designs right you're doing a design or working with clients and dealing with the rejection of the client going no you need to fix that and oh my god I got this deadline and I'm so you it's yeah uh, it was a real um, strength builder it's a it's a hard button to turn off, isn't it? Yeah. Like when when you feel like you've especially when you feel personally that you've nailed a design, right? And you're like they're gonna love it, yeah. and then they don't. Yeah, it literally feels like someone's stabbing you in the back yeah. or something, and you're just like, yeah. It, and it can really it can sour the job for you sometimes. Yeah. Absolutely, but it's you have to get over that. And I still struggle with it all yeah. the time, you know. But you gotta you know you gotta you gotta always do what they're asking for. That's the thing. It's like when you go to all the other chefs in the kitchen and these are the people who are paying the bills or they're the client. It's like you got to right treat your client. The client's always right. Right. It just comes down to that. But I think where it hurts so much is because especially when you've been doing it for so long, you feel like I'm taking 20 plus years of knowledge that I'm taking your idea, your vision, what you've sort of said that you want, and now I'm putting it down on paper and designing it. And oh man, I'm getting real happy with this. I think, I truly think this would be a great direction and even a different direction. So it doesn't just fit the norm. So you're trying to right. do something different and not be like everyone else. Right. And then that gets rejected for being different. And you're just like, oh man, I, you know, that's where it hurts. Cause you're like, yeah, that was all my experience. That's yeah. all my, you, you, you just like, you just smash that in, in a second, yeah. but my lesson really, and I tell a lot of my students this is, just don't over render things straight off the bat. Don't spend hours trying to do it. You gotta give them the clear thumbnails, but where right. you're just showing them the ideas, don't fall in love with it because you know what can happen. Nine out of 10, you gotta throw that one away. Yeah, that's you it. know, you gotta be able to kill your babies, I yeah. guess, apparently. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's a very, very hard lesson, very, very hard lesson to learn. Yeah, it is. And, it, you know, for, for those, you know, future clients that are listening, it's just like, you know, you're hiring us for a reason. It's because we have taste, because we have years of experience, because we like the things we do. Yeah. You know, and that's that's also hard to say to someone, uh, especially if they're not in the right mindset. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you got to kind of tippy toe around it. It's just like you can't tell them no, but you can say, yeah, we could, let's do that. And, and you always do that. Yeah. But if you really believe in the project, then you come around with, here's a sketch I did after I worked on the thing that you asked me to do, and I felt like this is this is the result that we went. I can't wait to get like Crash in here and talk about the Predator drawings <laughs> oh. and stuff like that, um, because that's a clear case, you know, where you always do what you, the client says, right. but then if you have this other idea, you know, um, you know, or or whoever whomever came up with that that design, but it's definitely definitely a hard thing to get over. And, you know, and I think sometimes the hard thing is, is just the way clients will treat the artists and with the idea that you're an artist, this is what you love, you know, that there, it's almost feeling like, oh, you could just knock it out. You could just do it. Right. right. And, and it's that sort of that mentality. That only took you 15 minutes. Yeah. Right. It took me 15 yeah, years. Exactly. And that's what it comes yeah. where it's sort of that mentality. Like it, you just blow it off where the, people won't tell you, a great job, or even if they're not going to use you, even some clients even reaching out back to you and saying, hey, we're not going to use you or something's not going to um, manifest into something that they just like, just blow you off. Like I hear that again, it happens all the time. Just artists are just blowing off. It's just like they've done this work and just no response back or anything. Mm. It's the, this sort of idea that yeah. it doesn't matter, but really anything else you'd think, well, the courteous thing to do is just maybe email someone and just yeah. say, hey, thanks, but no thanks or whatever it is. Yeah, or or understand like, that's just your first go at it. That you know, too. like that's yeah, the hard yeah. thing for yeah. clients to understand because yeah. they're, they're seeing money being spent and they're not happy with certain things, right? But totally. like the blue sky, yeah. the pre-production yeah. is so important. Yeah. 
It yeah. lays the groundwork for everything. And if you don't build a solid foundation there, you got plot holes, you got, you know, all kinds of things that can happen, you know. So isn't it I everything feel, yeah. like that? You know, it's building I feel, the by yeah. foundation. It's just like in order to make that tree grow, you gotta plant, you gotta nurture it, you gotta keep giving it the water, the nutrients, and eventually it's gonna start producing the apples and the oranges and everything else, right? Yeah. It's just like but yeah, just to like submit one design or not one design your first pass and be like, no, it's like, uh, I'm just getting started. I'm yeah, getting, yeah. You know, my brain's yeah, going to like, let me try get again. it out let of me, paper. Let me keep going, you know? And, yeah. And and that's the important part, really. It, it really is. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, so when, when you were starting your career out, was there any specific film, TV, comic book, magazine, whatever it was that really inspired you to get into the film game? You know, it was well, just really Mad Magazine for me because I, Mad I, Magazine, yeah, nice. I mean, yeah. I thought my my whole career path, what I thought was just going to be a caricature artist. I thought I was going to be running theme park operations and hiring caricature artists, and that was going to be <laughs> that was my journey. That's yeah, yeah. where I was heading. That's what I wanted to do. I'm like. And, and I was starting to do it. I was setting up at the shopping malls during Christmas time and I'd hire other artists. You just like churros, be yeah. honest. <laughs> that, that was fun. You're like, that's a perk. Yeah, 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 there yeah. It is. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, and I just realized that, um, that, that, oh, I forgot where, where, I, where I was going with that. Um, that's my fault, the churro thing. Yeah, you're true. You threw my me bad. off. Now I'm my starting bad. to think Sorry, about guys. churros, you know, that would be so, so great. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no. Your question was in regards uh, like, to, what, what was there? Was there something that in, inspired you? Like, is, oh, was there a right. movie or game you used to say? And it's a Mad Magazine. magazine. Yeah. And then it was through Mad Magazine when I saw caricature and really discovered that, and that mm -hmm. was actually uh, Mort Drucker from Mad Magazine had drawn the Predator, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, really? <laughs> and I remember I was in eleventh grade and I saw that, and I'm just like, whoa, this is the most amazing thing ever. How do you do that? And then I just started falling in love. But the funny thing is, was I never read any of the magazines. I, I was just one of those guys that was just looking at the pretty pictures. Yeah, that's yeah, what I did. Yeah. And I started a collection, and I'm just drawing and copying. And then I just had a love of cartoons, but never thought about animation as a career or anything, but it was really, I didn't know where I was gonna go, what I wanted to do other than caricature, and happened to meet a guy at a meeting who was a storyboard artist on the show Freakazoid, if you remember I remember Freakazoid, that show. yeah, yeah. And he looked at my artwork and he said, eh, you know, you got some good stuff, you know, keep it up. And I kept it up, and about a year later, I got in touch with him, he was at Warner Brothers at the time, mm -hmm. and I said, can I show you my stuff? And he said, yeah, come on up to LA, and then he took my uh, portfolio and they just fired the character designer, one of the character designers on the show that week. So they were looking that week for a new character designer. Oh, wow. All I had was caricatures in my portfolio. It was a very caricature heavy show. They gave me a test, but that's how I transitioned into that. And it wasn't, it was almost like, a, it was in a way a weird kind of accident, you yeah. know, other than my parents would always, even though I was out of the house, they would always send me articles like saying, hey, Look at the booming animation industry that sent me articles on that oh, or about a hear. cartoonist yeah. or, and I'd read those. So it was a booming time. This was back like 96, 97. So they were, they were, they were, they were very supportive. Always supportive. They, they were just like not it doing it because they wanted me to fail and knew I couldn't make it as an artist. It was more like if yeah. you truly think you can make it, well then try to make it. And that, that drive, that was a real turning point for me because I didn't get, I couldn't get comfortable. I had to hustle. It's yeah. like, what am I going to do? I don't even have an art education. What am I going to do? How am I going to get a job? So I was always in my mind forging my own path. I was painting windows um, at Christmas time, you know, like a little Santa on people's windows. Oh, really? Yeah, I ran around and did that. Yeah. You know, I was I was going into just copy center stores and putting up just little notices. If you need a freelance artist with some horrible, stupid drawing, you know, like <laughs> I can't imagine what it looked like if I looked at it now, but I did get a couple jobs out of it. You hey, know, there man, was you were hustling. paying jobs, but I was hustling. Yeah. And I think I was always just kind of like hustling like that because I realized that no one, no one had my back. There was going to be no one that was going to all of a sudden say, Hey, Steven, let me just take you. Give you a give job, you a job yeah. and just uh, put you on the pedestal and raise you up. You know, it's just like, if I want this, I got to work at this. 
I, yeah. I feel I fear that there is a lot of that going around where, you know, um, when I was at Noman, I remember a student actually asking that question, like, you know, uh, I, I think the teacher made made some sort of comment like, you know, don't have your LinkedIn name be like crazy cat lady 78 <laughs> be professional, you right. know? And the comment that came back to him was like, well, I don't have to be because you're going to get me the job. And I was like, that's not what school is. Yeah. Holy cow. Wow. You know? And that there is a lot of people that, you know, they're the degree helps. It yeah. does, yeah. but it's also not needed. Right. Um, if, you know, but if you, you know, if you want to go overseas and work, it's definitely needed. Yeah. I'm not telling you, I'm not trying to say you shouldn't do it. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is when you do get it, yeah. that's just part one of right. the, the battle, you know, yeah. uh, yeah. that you have to, you have to commit to, yeah. you have to hustle. No one's yeah. going to just give you a job because no. you have a degree. Right. Your portfolio is so, so important these days. And, you know. I mean, what, what what do you think of, you know, like just to kind of segue into that, yeah. like what are some of the most important things that you see that are do's and don'ts in portfolios for younger students? I think the, and uh, I, I mean, I'll start with the, the do's are just make sure that you're, depending what area you want to get into, you know, I'm mm -hmm. talking about television animation, mm -hmm. feature animation, um, in that, those sort of genres. And the thing that you want to just really focus on is just be versatile. I think it's so important. You got to realize that every single show is different. Every animated series is different. Every feature. So the more versatile you are, the more opportunities you're going to have. If you're just sticking just one trick pony in, in the animation world, it gets a little hard. There's a few guys, very few handful of guys that are getting work just based on their pure style right. as designers. Most of the artists out there are having to adapt and draw in different styles all the time. So that's number one. And just showing a lot more production work. Don't, people try to make things so fancy. You know, they gotta fully render it. They're fully coloring it. They're just showing a character in some crazy wild expression or and whatever, which is fine. But they're not showing the turnarounds. They're not right. just showing the, the mouth chart. They're not showing the just expression sheets. They're not showing how you got to that character, right? So they're skipping through the whole thinking, no one wants to see my thumbnails but everyone wants to see your thumbnails. And that's right. what the directors always wanna see. They wanna, hey, you gotta design this character. Well, give me some options. Don't just give me one design. And that's why what you wanna have. So it sort of falls into the don'ts is, don't just have just one yeah. style. Don't just have a portfolio full of rendered stuff. Really show how you get from A to B and that you can do the whole process. That's yeah. that's a very important. So you're thing. showing you're showing the the treasure without showing the map and how yeah. you got there. My my one of my first jobs at a at a studio out here, it was all nothing but shotgun attempts. And once I left there, I could just see. You know, like you you didn't let me do just do two days of research, or two days of right. sketches. And you wanted to finish you know finished image over and over and over and over yeah. and over. And it's it's like a shotgun attempt, right? Like I'm just whatever I'm gonna sh fire off all these high quality images, whatever sticks is whatever sticks, right. right? And what I feel that Hollywood still hasn't kind of figured out is that that's insanely wasteful. Yeah. What you need is a smaller team. Yeah. That knows the visual development. Yeah. What they teach you in school is absolutely the way it is the way you get there, and it's yeah. also the way to keep a happy client. Yeah. Because whether they whether they think it or not, they're totally involved in the process. Because you, you you know oh I got you know twenty thumbnails. Which ones do you like? Oh I like this row and this row. Right. All right, let's nail it down. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you everyone's happy right. with the path that you're taking. Yeah. And if it's just like no 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 like there's there's no room. Yeah. It's not you know you gotta you gotta give them the buffet to choose from. Yeah. And everybody ends up going home full, right? right? right you know, yeah. So I, it's it's something that it's it's hard to see, especially when you go on Art Station or you're you're looking online. It's nothing but finished images. Yeah. It's like show me how you got right. there, because sometimes that might change a script. Absolutely, that might change the whole DNA. Yeah. 
You know, I love watching behind the scenes of like oh, yeah. how they make Disney, you know, like Moana or, yeah. or, you know, even, you know, live action films. I, I eat that stuff up. Yeah. I love watching that kind of stuff. It's, I love watching when I would just look at original artwork. My favorite things to look at were Frank Pazetta's roughs. Go to Comic Con, oh, you see yeah. all Frazetta's roughs, and you go, oh my God. Look at the dynamic. Look at that. And, you know, the finished ones are awesome. Yeah. But look at all the roughs. Look what he did to get there. And just, the, he, wow, he really created all those different variations. And there's yeah. something, yeah, where people think that that's the messy stuff. We're not going to show that. But it's so important, you know, in, the, in this whole process. It also shows it's okay to make mistakes. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like, you don't always have to get it right the first no. time, you know? No. We, I, it's funny you just said Frazetta. Like, I just bought like a big, thick, collected works oh, did, yeah. book, yeah, nice. and I was showing to it to the that. guys, and everyone was like, "Oh my gosh," you know. And you know, that's another thing that I, I feel is kind of not happening as much as it should be. You know, I, I, I teach out at Art Center, um, uh, you know, College of Design out in Pasadena. Um, I've taught at you know Red Engine and all these other places, and I'll say names like Jim Henson right. or Frank Frazetta. Blank faces. They don't know. Yeah. And they just don't know. And and that's so important because there's so much to learn. Oh. You know, I do a lot of digital stuff, but I tell you what, when I when I watched a Stan Winston DVD on uh, with Steve Wang on how he paints like nice. airbrushing for aliens, it's like, well, I have that brush and ZBrush. How's he laying it down? Right. And then you learn, right? right? Everything, yeah. whether it's practical or digital, it all helps yeah. you create. And it's it's all... It, you should it's know where it circle. comes from. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And that's what's... Me because I feel people, especially now, our attention span is so short. Mm -hmm. And everything is just like, we need it now. And if it's not just happening right now, then we're not going to give it the time and everything that we need. I think you just need to act and just... Uh, just put in, put in, just put in the time. Yeah, absolutely. Know? I mean, a lot of people forget that James Cameron was a matte painter. He was a matte painter before he was a director. You know. Yeah. So Let's yeah, it's it's somewhere. It's definitely definitely crazy. Um, have you ever had a time where you wanted to to leave the animation business? Um, yeah, absolutely. And I think in a way, it's it's been happening, and it's kind of like happening now. And it's not for the reasons that I don't like animation. It's just like, I found my, I know my true calling as crazy as it sounds in life is teaching. Oh, that's and, great. and I just love, it's like, I dream about it. I'm always taking notes. I'm always thinking of different approaches and how I can explain something to someone. And that's taken up all my, my energy really it, it, in, in a good way. It's like, it's something that I really enjoy. So for myself, I'm just like, I can, I, I've always been entrepreneurial. And I've always, it was one of the reasons at a point where at, I was at Nickelodeon and I was leaving all the time because I was doing just different. I was going to conventions, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And I remember the line producers like, why are you always taking time off? Why are you always gone? And at that point I kind of realized, well, because I got a life and there's things that I yeah. want to do. And yeah. you know, it, and and knowing that, hey, I'm, I'm giving myself to you. I'm giving you guys my best. And, and that's something that I always want to encourage artists to do, no matter what studio you're working for, no matter what you're doing, you, you don't have to, it's not about giving 100%. It's about like giving 100% of 80%. So it's 80% for the company that you're working for, but 100%, you know, you're giving yeah. it your full on thing and 20% for you, you have to invest in yourself because unfortunately most of these studios let go of you. They, they let go of these artists who, who build these brands, who give the studios all the value and really help them grow and then just sort of like thrown off to the wayside or just like even in the animation industry, just not the artists not being valued as much for what they do. It's like, this should be a win-win situation. There's these artists are building your franchise. They're making your company. They're yeah. making you what you are. And I think if you just give the artists what they deserve, um, and especially in this new media mm -hmm. way now with the Netflix and everything, you know, happening, it's just all these studios. It's just like the contracts just really need to change. Artists should be paid more of their worth, especially when you're living in California. Again, win-win yeah, yeah. situation. That's what the studio should do. And yeah. before you were talking about studios that are doing, um, you know, you feel like they, they're they not necessarily getting the, 
the production line down, so to speak, there, the way right, they handle right. things. What I think is missing too is they can spend millions of dollars, there'll be $50 million in the hole before they even really start the true essence of making the film instead of just nailing down yeah. that script. Oh no, we've gone yeah. through all this work, we have all this production work, but now we're changing everything and all that gets thrown away. What a huge waste of money. You oh, know? absolutely. It's just like, yeah. why not just make it solid from the get-go in the script writing phase, really test that, check that. Now we're ready to go and make the best use of everyone's time. Then you can pay the artist more money, you can have a successful film. I mean, it'll just follow. Yeah, I mean, it. We, we've, we've talked about this before where we almost feel like part of our, you know, like concept designer or visual development artist, it, there should be another line there that says franchise designer. Absolutely. Because that's, I mean, that's really what it is. Absolutely. And, and, you know, even going back to what you were saying about, you know, putting in that extra 20%, you know, uh, that's that's something I've I've wholeheartedly believed in. And honestly, it's where I have the most fun. Yeah. Is when I'm doing work for myself. Yeah. And... I know I say this now because I came from, you know, I came from graphic design. I was doing, you know, album covers and websites and graphics and all that kind of stuff. And I was doing it so cheap to the point where, you know, I would, I would have been better off working at McDonald's. Right. Right. So yeah. I, and, and not dissing anybody that works at McDonald's, yeah. but that's, that's a, that's a barely a living wage. And right. I think you guys should be paid a lot more yeah. anyway. So, yeah. um, but that's what that's I'm only I'm only equating that to the wage, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you have to take a look at a job. And I know it for a lot of the younger artists, it can be difficult to turn any money away. Right. It's very, very hard. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is it may not be the first time you do it, but maybe the second or third time that you say no to a low paying job and do something for yourself. And you realize that, hey, I just did that piece. Right. I put a print out there. Oh my God. Yeah. There, it sold two hundred copies. Right. That that's my week's wage, or you know exactly. something like that. Yeah. You know, I'm terrible at math. Yeah. <laughs> and if <laughs> somebody were to tell me in high school that math is extremely important to yeah. be an artist, right. <laughs> I would have been like, shit. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I'm getting into. I'm trying to be better now, and I'm trying to learn a lot more. Yeah. You know, yeah. um. But it, it's so worth it's so worth doing the personal yeah. stuff and I, doing the personal investing piece. in yourself. You know, you I really mean, again, do. it's gonna fulfill you. It's like, and where I see a lot of artists who are struggling, they're burnt out, they're just chasing whatever, whether it's trying to get to that next position or win that award or whatever mm -hmm. it may be, and just burning out, burning out, and realizing that I've given, and especially the hardest things when you hear some of these artists have given ten years, fifteen years, twenty years to a company, and then no longer with that company, all of a sudden, don't let the door hit you in the ass. You know, it's like, had you given yourself 20% to just work on your own little thing, not that you need to do it all at once, but just, I like to say, piece by piece will bring you peace. You know, if you just oh, work good. on things in little pieces, and it's like, you don't need to do it all in this big chunk, but dedicate, whether that graphic novel, that print, like you said, doing something that that next convention coming up that you can go and sell something that you created that you have ownership there's there's a magic and and it's a fill station for you that mm -hmm. just gives you a sense of a little bit more pride than just sometimes being the cog in the wheel i mean being part of a production is an amazing thing and it's you meet lots of people and if it's a good production it's awesome if it's a horrible production it's it's, it's the worst it's thing. not awesome it's <laughs> not awesome <laughs> not everything is awesome yeah and uh, but i think yeah just putting whatever just working that little thing and not worrying that what it looks like today you know and just knowing that if i you know what I've always wanted to do a graphic novel and if I know that if I just start working on my thumbnails and I working on doing one page a week, by the end of the year I'm gonna have a full on graphic novel, you know. And that's awesome. Yeah. 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 And why and not? That's you know, like I'm currently working on one myself, like not not a graphic novel, but you know, um I'm working on a book with Art Station and you know, it's my IP and it's something that I've been working on for a very long time, nice. and I recently brought on like uh, um, a, a co-writer uh, to kind of because I'm not a writer, you right. know what I mean? Like I have all these ideas, and you know uh, I can bounce them off somebody, and they can help me organize these right. things. And you know, uh, you know, uh, it's been really, really great. But 
those those are the moments that I absolutely treasure. You know, like I'm like I wish I could do this yeah. for the for a living. Yeah. You know, um, and and being able to do that kind of stuff is always the best. You know, and you know, shout out to uh, Bowman Modine and his wife Sarah. They just had a, a baby. That oh, you know, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, congratulations to them. But yeah, that's he's he's my he's my you know co-conspirator in creating some of this stuff. So it's really fun, um, you know, to bring to bring him in on this like last stretch of after I've created so many characters and right. got all these backstories and yeah, he's like, hey, this conflicts with this. Oh. And you're like, oh, yeah, you're oh, right. Nice. Or, you know, like I, I'm stuck on how to get from A to B and he's, you know, he's already thought of it, you right, know, stuff like right. that. Yeah. So it's really great to have that. And, um, you know, I look forward to doing more stuff with him. But it's so important to do that stuff for yourself. Pride of ownership. You it know, really like is. That. It's not, especially in the creative world, you know, you want to know that there's something there that, what have I done with my life? You know, yeah, where, right. where is this, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know, like even for me, you, you know, like, you know, I, I was at Ironclad and I founded Ironclad and I left Ironclad. And for a very long time, you know, for about three to four months after that, I didn't know where I wanted to go. And, you know, like I would still openly welcome working at a company yeah. or doing something, you know, especially now that we're allowed to do it remotely, right. you know, and I can, I don't have to leave L.A. I really yeah. like L.A. Um, you know, and there, there's a lot of people that, you know, will still say that I'm insane for turning <laughs> around and doing another studio after this, you know. Um, and, you know, hey, the jury's out on that one. We'll, we'll wait and see. <laughs> I'm probably just crazy. But, uh, you know, it's something... I think it's important as an artist to have something that you own. Yeah. Whether it's whether it's a place or an idea or or something. Yeah. You know, that it it's nice to believe in something and then go out there and work for that belief right. every day, yeah. right? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you know, like wh how do you find balance in your life? You know, like what, you know, what is your day-to-day -day like? You know, I'm very organized in the way of I just don't keep anything on my phone calendar wise so I have just a that's I, insane <laughs> yeah how do you no, I go to Staples <laughs> and I you know and it, it, there's the calendar 10 bucks and I buy the calendar mm -hmm. every year and I just mark my my days that way my calendar is always right next to me and there's always like the fix things that I know okay I know that I need to go and do this on this day, that on that day, and that's written down. Those, but it could even be a doctor's appointment, right? You know, okay, on Wednesday, I, I got a doctor's appointment. You got those set fixed things. And then all the other things are, I'm able just to say, okay, today I'm going to work on my lessons my, for my students. And that's going right. to be on that day. And on this day, I'm going to work on my my caricatures. And this day, I'm going to work on my freelance. And, and I'm just trying to organize things. But it, it helps me balance it. And also, I just try to limit anything that I'm doing to about four to five things a day. And that's it. And it's all written down because there was this great philosopher named Wallace Waddles. And I read his book many years ago. And he said, don't do tomorrow's work today. And that always stuck huh. with me. It's just like, because it's tomorrow's work. Why, why just because I finished early or I did something, do I need, you know, that tendency, oh my God, you feel guilty. I, I should just keep going. I got to keep it. No, you know what? That's tomorrow's work and I'm going to leave it till tomorrow. And I found that it, it works. And it's I feel a like I needed, I needed you to tell me this like maybe eight years ago. <laughs> I'll tell you now. This is it. This is it. Just That's great you know, philosophy. But, yeah. And I just write it down and then I see, hey, look, I've finished what I wanted to do. And then I can just relax and just uh, chill out and, and from there. But that's sort of like how I'm balancing it. And I usually, you know, I have my wife and my two kids. I have a 16-year-old and an 18-year-old. And now, you know, they're still at home. And mm -hmm. it's just, I want the family life. I'm usually done yeah. working at around 5, 6 o'clock. I make an effort just to be done. On the weekends, I keep free. But these are all conscious decisions you say. I'm going to do this and, and and eventually becomes a habit forming a habit. And that's why I sort of like find the, the balance with it all. Yeah. Like, like, cause there's, I mean, you know, every, everybody talks about getting in the zone, right? right? Getting in the yeah. zone. And when you're sketching, do you, do you have times like that where you allow yourself to get into the zone or is it one of those things where if it happens, it happens, but you're still, you're still trying to adhere to a, to a schedule. Cause I, I mean, there's been several times in here, you know, working at the studio, or, you know, even working at home where you're like, oh, no, you got to get up and go do something. And you're like, no, 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 right, no. Right, right. This, I'm on to something here. For or, sure. 
yeah, it's hard, I mean, that's hard to turn off. It is. It is. That definitely always happens. Like my my wife knows or my kids know because my studio is separated from the house and mm. they just know oh, that. That's nice. Listen to the, make sure I'm not recording. I'm not doing anything. Put your ear by the door and, they, you know. <laughs> Dad. Um, but other than that, you know, I realized, again, it, it's different for me, especially having kids. Where I, I, when I was first going to become a dad, I was terrified of how does an artist get in the zone, have this real drive to get better and improve, but have kids and be a good dad. How do you do that? How do you balance that? And that always scared the hell out of me. So I didn't want kids. How can I be a good dad if I'm so concentrated on trying to become a better artist? And I started reading books on artists that I could find. One of them was Norman Rockwell and realized that he was a really shitty dad. Oh no. Yeah, 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 he was a real bad dad. And then there was um, Hank Ketchum, mm -hmm. who was uh, from Dennis and Menace, another real bad dad, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm realizing, because they were uh, so focused on their artwork and the things, and I go, and then I talked to one of my um, uh, friends who became a friend, Mort Drucker, I got to know Mort Drucker and talked to him and say, how did you do it? And he told me how much he would just listen when the kids are coming in, I just pay attention and, and doing all that. And that became just a major focus for me was just to make sure that this is a sacrifice. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, you gotta realize when you're getting into this, especially having kids, there's the, there's the sacrifice of your choosing either to give up spending time with your kids because your artwork's more important and doing all this stuff becomes more important and you can miss out on your kids growing up. Otherwise, the sacrifice is that you're um, working all the time um, and you're just not, uh, yeah, there's working all the time, not paying attention to the kids, otherwise putting your dreams to the side to say, I'm not gonna draw all the time. I'm not gonna draw on the weekends anymore. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna do this stuff. And that, that was a sacrifice that I took where I held myself back from doing a lot of things I wanted to do because I just wanted to be a good dad. And now it, it paid off because my kids are old enough now and they have a great relationship. They want to tell me everything as opposed to being the dad <laughs> that was just like, yeah. you know, just uh, he was never there. So anytime they come into the studio, even when they were younger, I would stop what I'm doing turn around for those few seconds and they'd be like, dad, blah, 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 uh-huh, 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 and then they're gone. Yeah. Right? So they only needed, that's all they needed. They just needed that one or two minutes of yeah. your time. So if you can give your kids that little bit of time, it's going to pay off in the end as opposed to being the dad that's just an arsehole later. My dad was never around. He never paid attention to me. He never did this. And that was something that I had to work You, you gave them the hundred percent of your of your time For sure. in those few minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Just said, yeah, and yeah. that became an became, important thing. became full circle there. Yeah, yeah. Learning yeah. from clients <laughs> is just like having that, children. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. That's it. Yep. Yep. I yeah. love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So uh so you know, we we've kind of we've gone all the way from from, you know, going to school, fi finding a sketchbook to all the way through high school and, and to now, at, you know, being a father and having the kids and working in the industry, being a teacher as well. Yeah. What are you up to? What's going on with you? I mean, like, uh, you know, I know you have a, you have a Kickstarter going on yeah. right now. Just talk, yeah. talk about that a little bit. So during, uh, there's something that I've always been holding inside of me. Like I mentioned, I, I just love teaching. I know mm -hmm. that's my purpose, but the thing that I kept putting off for the longest time was to really go full force and do what I really wanted to do. And what I really wanted to do is because I'm always teaching, I'm always drawing, I'm always making videos. I just want to have an online school. I had a physical art school oh, that's before. Great. Yeah. And so I wanted to online and I realized during COVID, once COVID hit and all my conventions were canceled, mm -hmm. all this other mm -hmm. stuff, my workshops were canceled. And I'm just like, this is a weird, crazy sign, you know, the silver lining in a way, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I just realized that I, I want to make uh, a school. I want to make uh, an, an art school online, just teaching motivation alongside with drawing. How do you combine the two? How do you go from not just doing drawings or doing lessons, but really capturing people's attention to think about truly the art side of it and the mindset of it 
beyond just the drawing. And so I'm combining motivation with art training and drawing and keeping videos extremely short. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to build. I wanted to build something where people can come and learn what it is that they need to know. I have so, and, and another thing that happened to me was when my, when Mort Drucker died mm -hmm. uh, for Mad Magazine, made me realize how much all these artists in life, they have so much talent, like a Frank Fazetta, anyone. Mm -hmm. And these guys, they've made their books, they've done their stuff, but their talent, all, Al Hirschfeld, when they died, it was gone. You know, mm. all that was left was in their book, all this knowledge, all those years of knowledge. And here I am, and I realize that my journey, I've, I've lived this journey, I've lived this life, and I've used the tools. And all I wanna do now is hand those tools off, because I can, and I know I can. That's great. I yeah. know that I can give you what it is that you need in order for you to build your own house you know, right. and pass it on. And that's where I'm at in my life more than anything. It's just, I just want to help other people build and know that this is all possible. And I thought the best way, the most effective way to do it is build this online school, which is the Silver Drawing Academy, which is the what the Kickstarters uh, for too, where I created a Kickstarter. I released it at Lightbox. Um, the idea of it, put it out there, but now with the Kickstarter, just to, to again, bring more awareness, show people what it is and yeah. um, just get people inspired. I think that's what I want to do. I want to make a, I want to make an impact on people's lives. And I know I have, and, and I'm not doing it to boast or anything like that. I just right. know that I can, I know that I can help you and why, why just hide it or not share it or do anything like that. And that's one of the reasons why I just know that this is my purpose. This is my journey. And this um, the Silver Drawing Academy now is just built on, there's over 300 videos already in there. I'm uploading new videos every week. There's so everything's, be, oh wow, everything's yeah, already done. It's ready to yeah, go. Yeah, there's gonna be live drawing sessions where once a month, we're, we're all the people in the community, it's got its own private community where we're all oh, sharing, yeah. share the artwork. And then once a month, you're gonna have live drawing sessions where people can meet up and all draw together. And, that's great. Um, and that's what it is. It's a combination of all these things. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. Thanks, yeah, thanks. man, that's great. Um, yeah, I mean, like, so I don't have any more questions after that um, other than, you know, also, by the way, guys, anybody that's watching this, we'll have the link for the Kickstarter in the description. Um, definitely go and check that out. Um, I think I think we're coming close to wrapping it up. Is there anything else you want to talk about? No, other than I just think anyone that's listening to this and watching this just know, I know there's all different age groups and there's all different sort from students to professionals to teachers is just make stuff happen. Just don't wait. Just realize that if you want to do it, it's it's up to you. You know, what, what do you really want? What do you want to be? What do you want to be? What do you want to act on? What do you want to make happen? Don't wait for other people to make decisions for you. Don't let whether family, relatives, anyone just tell you that this is impossible. And just because it's difficult doesn't mean it's impossible. And it's just, just go out there and do it. Create, start your own studio, start your own Kickstarter, start your own uh, book, start your own animation. Just, just begin. And I think, and remember just piece by piece, don't worry about it all being figured out. And I think that's what stops the majority of people is they feel like they gotta have the whole plan and you don't, you need to let it unravel like the mm -hmm. universe unravels. You know, it's just like every day, we're just traveling through space, hurtling through space and things are changing every day. And it's just like, go along with it, be a part of that, that river, be a part of the flow of life. And I think when you just open yourself to just let things happen and not try to control everything, it's going to be that much better. Happens, yeah. You know, your life is that much better. The journey is always worth it. Yep. The journey is always worth it. Yep. All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys, for joining us on this episode of uh, 10K Hours, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Bye.